What's going on, guys? Check out this week's episode. I'm going to be talking about marketing, social media, all sorts of stuff. So check it out. You're going to love it. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity TV show. And today, we've got none other than Mitch. Mitch, how are you going, dude? I'm good. What's going on? Very well, thanks. Now, when we... When we were looking out to get experts like you, you wrote to us and you told us you built a lot of businesses through social media and digital marketing and that you've had success at a lot of things and also failed at a lot more. That touched me. Yeah. And I thought, wait a minute, why not bring him across, have a little chat with uh, Mitch and find out what Mitch is all about. Well, here I am. Happy to be here. Great stuff. Thank you so much. Now, Mitch, you run a very successful uh, digital marketing agency. Tell us a little bit about what you do and what your vision and mission is all about. Sure. So I run what's called Mastered Marketing, which is a company It almost came about by accident, to be honest, because when I first started growing my other businesses, I was just frustrated by how much it cost. And like, even starting a website and getting leads and these companies would want to charge me like more than my business was worth to generate leads. And I was like, this is too frustrating. So I'm going to do it myself. Uh, and then throughout that process, I found how much I loved marketing. And that was probably, you know, two and a half, three years ago when I was doing my startup. And then the more I did it, I was like, wow, more people need to know how to do this stuff. So I started doing it uh, just for friends and family. And then I realized, hey, this is actually like a thing that people want. Because what I thought was really basic was actually really valuable to a lot of people. So fast forward, uh, these days we spend a lot of time doing uh, personal branding. So branding for companies is good, but also personal branding. So I like to take uh, like real estate agents, professionals, consultants, those people and make them look really interesting and put out compelling content and build their business through social media because the power of a personal brand today is so powerful. Like back in the day, if you had John's butcher and John left, uh, it's, it's ruined. But these days, there's so much power behind it and people want to know the face behind the, the name and the, and the company. So I help people do that. There's not really a lot of people that are doing it. So it's a good niche. And I think I love to help people tell the story they already have and get it out into the world. They don't actually have to create anything new. I'm just telling their story louder in a way that makes people actually want to listen. Great. You, you were touching a lot more on personal branding. Is that also an essential part for a digital marketer? For me, yes, because I probably 80% of my business has come through me representing my own business as, because when you're in marketing, when you're in sales, marketing, finance, you know, you can, you can be your own brand. You're sort of like a consultant, even though it's an agency, they like it when you talk one-on-one -on -one and you help them grow. And then you just have to do it strategically so that you can bring on other people in your team and have them instill the culture in them that they're still delivering the same amount of value to the client so that the client's not gonna be upset when someone else is doing it. There's a balance of adding enough value with yourself, but also not becoming completely unscalable because if you can't scale, you're not gonna be able to grow the business. So for marketers, I think be the face of the company. Don't just be the business, don't be just you, but represent your company because you, you're gonna be able to put out engaging, compelling one-to-one -one sort of content. Is digital marketing hard? It depends. I mean, it depends because like, I love it. So it's not hard for me to want it. It's like, okay, for me, going to the gym, hate it. Uh, I like playing basketball. I like doing boxing. But for me to go and lift weights is hard. So for me to go and do that would be hard. But I love marketing. So it's not hard for me to put in those hours to read books and study and, and, and be prepared to waste money on it. But I think for uh, an agency, just keep it simple. Just do one or two things really well instead of trying to do everything. Because when you hear marketing, it could be like AdWords, Facebook, Pinterest, Snapchat, Twitter, content, graphic design, PR. Like it could be one of a million things. So pick a few and be the best at that. So for example, right now, I'm spending a lot of time doing personal branding for real estate agents to help them get more clients through social media. Like that's a niche that not many people are doing. There's like two other people in Australia I see doing it. And they're like really expensive. So there's a niche there for smaller or small people that don't want to break the bank, but still want to grow their brand and work in real estate. I put it this way of like, if you're getting sued, right? Because of your business, not related to marketing, by the way, but if you're getting sued, do you want the lawyer that kind of does a little bit of everything like family law, maybe some accident law, or do you want like the Harvey Specter of business law who like that's all that he does and he's the best in the world at it. 
Like, I don't want to go to that guy. And you can charge higher prices when you specialize in something specific. Great stuff. You've really brought up an interesting thing about niching. And you also touched on what I'm going to ask you a little bit about loving what you do. So when you choose a niche, does it specifically have to be something you're familiar with? Or what, what, what determines what niche to go for? Because some people find that even hard to figure out what they love doing. So, I mean, obviously you kind of want to do stuff that you like. So there's three things and you can kind of do any of these three. So you want to do stuff that you like because you can do it regularly and you stay up to date and it's not a chore to do it. And um, we'll touch more on that later, I suppose. The second thing is identifying a problem. So for example, personal branding for real estate, there's really not many people doing that, but it's something that they need. There's so many. I mean, in Brisbane, there's 6,300 agents and there's like, seven of them that are doing okay social media. So like there's a huge market there and they need it done. So like that's an identifiable problem where you're like, if I could solve that, this market is enormous. And the third thing, something that you personally do. So when I go to my clients and I say, I'm going to do this, 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 I can say these are the tactics that I use and I wouldn't bother teaching them if they didn't work. So I'm not teaching you stuff that I've kind of just thought of in my room and put together and just to make money. It's like I'm doing, I'm teaching you the stuff that I and doing myself, which is why I'm sitting here talking to you. So you can be sitting across from customers yourself. So obviously you've been doing this for quite a while. How do you keep yourself motivated when clients keep telling you they're busy or they've got digital marketing sorted? So once you've got the client, you've just got to go 10 out of 10 above and beyond, give them something that no one else can possibly give. And so that's where, how you keep them. But to get them, you've just got to, you've got to know what you're selling and you've got to pitch it really well. And you just got to, you just got to hustle. Like, I mean, I've, oh, how many, how many people do I email? Like to get, I've probably got right now, I've got about six real estate agent clients and I would have, I've reached out to so many and, it, and they're particularly busy. They're like, oh, this, oh, someone's already said they could do it. And more often than not, it's not the problem they have with you. It's like the problem they've had with people in the past who said we could do this and then they didn't do it. So you got to break through, show why you're different, show why, and make it really, really, really easy to get started. So I used to want to train real estate agents to market themselves and it was a few thousand dollars and it's like, and they have to invest time to do it. So that's kind of harder for them to get started. And then I realized like, this is not really working. So what I'm going to do is just do it for them. And it's only 500 bucks to get started and then a monthly fee. So 500 bucks to get started and we can get you up in a week is really easy to get started. So you just want to get those people in with that kind of hook and be like, look, you don't have to do anything and offer things like, you don't have to do this, but you should if you're confident in yourself. You go, no lock-in contract, so you can cancel at any time. Um, and any month where you thought I didn't give you value, you tell me why, we'll talk about it. And if it's reasonable, I'll give you all the money back for that month. So then it's like, there's no logical reason why they wouldn't start. And then you can kind of, and this is more sales, you can kind of use their own goals okay. to justify your decision. So if you go, hey, where do you want to be in 12 months? And they say, oh, I want to double my income. And you say, okay, let's do this. And they go, I don't want to. It's like, well, you, do you not want to W? Did you lie or do you, you say, you know? So then you can kind of use the, what they said, not against them, but like to reinforce your argument of like, this is why you should. Here's what I can do. If I don't do it, don't pay me. Let's get started because I guarantee you're going to love it. So <laughs> it just makes it really easy. So, so they have the right to remain silent or whatever they say will be used against them in the court of law, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So obviously that question... I wanted us to marry two aspects that you've brought up, which are really, really important. First of all, niche and also doing what you love because you cannot pursue a niche that you don't specifically have particular, you know, love or fondness for because you will wear out and the more kickbacks you get, that's the reason why I asked you that question, how you keep motivated because the more people kick you back is because your niche is not defined your your marketing is not you know strong and targeted to those people okay so if you're watching this and then it's something that has struck a nerve make sure you download one of our 20 steps to actually start your own uh digital marketing agency today you're watching a couple of marketers here and obviously yes this is what we do we try and sell you things but give you value at the same time okay now obviously niche this is something that has been a passion of yours. You've mentioned that you got inspired because, you know, you were trying to start businesses and then you, come, you got into this, right? Now, let's say I know how to Facebook and I can send out a few Instagrams and I can Snapchat. Does that qualify me as a, graphic, um, as a digital marketer? 
I'm trying to think of a really good metaphor, um, but I can't think about. So basically, there's like consumers and creators, right? So you, if you know how to consume Facebook, you're on the other side of the table. So like, yeah. if you click on ads and you, oh, I know how like the timeline works and this. Yes, it is some of an advantage, but first of all, it's not that hard to learn. Like these these platforms are designed to be consumer facing platforms, so it's not meant to be hard. If it were hard, it wouldn't have like billions of users that Facebook does. Twitter. Twitter is sort of confusing. Snapchat, you can figure it out. If you really have no idea, Google it and you'll know how to use it better than 90% of people in 20 minutes. So just using them is not enough. You have to understand the business objectives behind it. Like at the end of the day, social media is just another platform for growing business. So whether it's print advertising, TV advertising, they're all growing the business. So you have to understand who's the audience, what do they want, what do they want to see, how do I add value, is what I'm saying directly in relation to the problem that they're having can I solve it? Why, you know, there's all these little things and like, how does this person react to things? And if I'm targeting like parents, like they're going to be different because they want stuff for the kids. Like I'm targeting tradies who want like blunt, no nonsense. Like you got to understand everything behind the social media, not just you can, you can type a word and hit send. Like that's not enough. So that means I have to go back to school then because I thought if I can Snapchat or Instagram, <laughs> Stories, I can go oh, you, don't, you don't have to go to school. You don't have to go to school. You just have to do it. So right. people go, how do you know how to use Instagram? I just did it. I figured right. it out. Okay, what are other people doing? How, does, how do they do this? This count is 600,000 followers. What have they done? What hashtags are they using? What kind of posts are they doing? And then you just, there's this thing that's amazing. It gives you all the answers. It's called the internet. You just Google it. <laughs> Seriously, I have, learned, I have learned almost everything that I know about marketing from the internet and books. Just, just figure it out. People go, oh, I don't know how, I can't do it. It's like, well, figure it out. Like, it's not that hard. <laughs> but that's why you have to love it because if you don't love it, you're not going to bother reading a book. Like, I, I, this, I got to I turn the camera. I think it's like, look at, like, this is sitting on books. We've got books, like, all those books over there. Wow. You just got to put in, the hour, put in the hours and just learn it. And if you love it, you will. So what I'm getting from you is make sure you niche down. Make sure you really, really love what you're doing. Keep learning. And basically just, yeah, give out content that's of value so that people would know, like, and trust you, right? Yeah, exactly. So keep it real simple. Pick a niche. Define the audience as part of that niche. Uh, make it really easy for them to get started. And then just keep it simple. Just do one or two things really well rather than trying to do 10 things pretty average. Pretty average. Okay, so... Basically, nicheify and just make sure you're doing a really awesome job at it. Now, when you're working, there's obviously certain tools or certain things. You've mentioned Google earlier. Um, is there any other tools that maybe you can recommend or some sort of resources that you might have yourself that you're using? First of all, you know, you've got, oh, where do I even begin? Okay, so we've got, okay, scheduling. If, okay, we'll do for marketers, right? Scheduling Hootsuite is really good. So you can schedule all of your, uh, content on different platforms and it's also good if you have um, new clients you can link up four five six Instagram accounts all from one place and it's really useful for LinkedIn because LinkedIn if your clients are on LinkedIn you can't uh, on Instagram you can log in and out or you can switch accounts really easily on LinkedIn you have to log in and out and it's a, it's a pain so it's really good to have that for scheduling um, you've got Canva for all your design stuff Hello? Absolutely use Canva. That's Canva is the best. I love Canva. Made by Australians too, which is really cool. Right. Uh, so that's fantastic. Everything designed, pay for it. It's like thirteen dollars a month to get the work one. It's worth it. You got Mailchimp for um, email marketing. You've got um, I just have one on top. Of my head. Squarespace is really good for making easy websites or WordPress. If you're depends how tech savvy you are. You've got uh, oh, there's so many. There's obviously Facebook, the Pages app. There's the Facebook ads app. There's a thing called um, HubSpot, HubSpot CRM platform. So that's not more marketing. That's just a really good way to remember meetings and little bits and pieces about your customers. So say, for example, your customer mentions she has a dog or she mentions she's going out for having an espresso martini. It's either little bits. So later on, you can buy an espresso martini and be like, oh, I, you know, like, you know, not don't rock up at a house with an espresso martini. I'm <laughs> just saying like use those little bits to create that wow factor where it's like, wow, this guy just or, or girl just knows everything about, like he's just switched on all the time. Um, and there's, so, there's so many other ones. Oh, Word Swag is a really good one for making easy Instagram posts. So it's kind of like a quick version of Canva. 
Uh, bit.ly, sorry, one more. Bit.ly is a really good one for shortening uh, links and also customizing them. So if you wanted to do this interview, it might be a really long URL, but you might do bit.ly.com slash Mitch dash interview. And it's like this little link and you can track it and it's fantastic. You seem to know a lot about your business, which is what may scare um, other people that how am I going to know all that stuff? So what is it that you do to just ensure that your growth and you, you are developing as a digital marketer every single day? Yeah, sure. So if you're getting started for the first time, uh, my biggest piece of advice is just get started. Whether you're starting small or, or you've got experience or anything, just get started because you can plan all the things in the world and you can try to figure out, Oh, I'm going to get all my ducks in a row and wait for the perfect time. But there is no perfect time. Uh, tomorrow never comes. So just do it now. That being said, you obviously do need to know some stuff before you start going out and representing yourself and a business and getting clients. So start with the basics. So start with uh, who's my audience and what am I going to be doing? So maybe you're doing Facebook advertising for restaurants or something. So that, cool. Now I need to learn Facebook advertising. So where do I learn that? And so I can't really give a, there's no magic bullet to knowing everything. Um, I, I, you know, it sounds exciting. Like, yeah, I've got this thing. It makes money and this and this, but I had, like so many stepping stones and, and stumbling blocks. And I spent months or weeks putting together this real estate training thing and then realized that no one wanted it. And I was like, ah, I've, I've made the wrong thing. Like I'm selling something that people need, but not something that people want. And that's what you got to remember as well. Read, um, there's a really good book. If, you, if you're going to be doing social media, read Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. That's a really good, quick summarized version of social media um, and, and how to use different platforms. There's also on my bookshelf, The Art of Social Media by Guy Kawasaki. Guy that's Kawasaki. a really good basic one. Yeah, that's a good one. It's easy to read, super simple. Um, oh, there's so many. I read a lot of books, so there's so many. But you just want to get the basics. And, and depending on what your niche is going to be, it'll vary. But right off the top of my head, Ty Lopez's social media uh, agency course is actually pretty good for beginners. Um, I, I, I did it and I got bits and pieces. Some of it's very basic, but that's good if you're um, just beginning. You've got Jason Hornung does really good Facebook uh, training. And uh, Sam Ovens does pretty good um, Ovens, teaching. Yeah. How to be so that's more personal branding, like representing yourself as a consultant. But still, they teach you the basics. Um, it's not like you have to do one of them, but like just see all of them and take bits and pieces and then tweak it to your thing. Like mine is a combination of my old businesses mixed with Sam Ovens, mixed with Ty Lopez, mixed with Gary Vaynerchuk, mixed with me, mixed with my mentor. Like it's a bit of everything. So there's no, you know, one bullet that does it, but just always be learning, read people like Seth Godin who are like marketing pioneers uh, in the modern world. And just, and just little stuff. It, if you don't like to read, just do it anyway. <laughs> like there's so much, all just videos like, I see people that want to take shortcuts. Look, if you want to build a big business, you have to learn from people that have done it. Yes, there's a lot of value in learning from your own mistakes, but I can tell you from someone who's lost a lot of money trying it that way, uh, it's much better to do a bit of both. So you don't have to learn the hard way. You will, but at the same time, learn from the best. If you want to know about stocks, read about, uh, read about Warren Buffett. If you want to live, like, learn about personal development, read Tony Robbins. If you want to learn about social media, read about Gary Vaynerchuk. Like, there's people that have done it before you and make tens of millions of dollars doing it. And you just don't want to learn it because you can't be bothered. It's like, just read it. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, Mitch. I cannot thank you enough for your insight and bringing your wealth of, um, um, you know, knowledge and you, you, you're like a mentor to us today. And I really appreciate you being here today. Like you say, okay, um, get, into something that you really, really like. Nichify and just make sure you give it your best shot, right? I've got a question for you, uh, Mitch. You'll see yeah. where I'm gonna go with this. Now, how long does it take for somebody to be a lawyer? All right, eight, nine years or something. Crazy okay. look, and yeah. How long does it take years. For, yeah, yeah, that's it. And how long does it take for somebody to be a doctor? For even longer, 10, 11, I don't know, too long. <laughs> Ever ask yourself, why do other people think it's, an overnight success to be a digital marketer or to be in the digital space? I think because, so when you're a marketer, right, if you start getting results, your thing is like, we've got all these results from people and we've done this, but you're not going to put up, hey, we sucked for a year. Uh, we didn't do anything. We, we lost money for people. So but don't worry about that because we're doing it good now. <laughs> like, it's just, 
you got to be, you have to be marketable. It's the same with anything. Like if you're a DJ and one day you hit a big song, like, you know, that's the song you're known for, but like they didn't see all the hours uh, behind the scenes. And I'm not trying to say, you know, you have to grudge it out, but there is going to be a time where you are hustling and things aren't working and you're going to have setbacks. But those opportunities, so th- sorry, those failures are the best opportunities for learning. So it's like, why did this go wrong? What happened here? Um, even yeah. little stuff like I'm, yeah, I'm representing a real estate agent and one of them is young, fun and friendly. So we use lots of emojis and I put one of them on a higher guy and he was like, oh, I wouldn't really say that. So like that even, so you can be upset and be like, Oh, he said he didn't like it. Or you can be like, that's a good point. I'm not going to do that. I'll switch it up here and this, this and that. So great stuff, Mitch. You've been so helpful. You've mentioned that people really do a men- need a mentor. People really need to know what their niche is and all the tools that you've put in. They are all going to be available in the show notes below. And also, um, if anyone has, have you got anything on your website that people can subscribe to? Yeah, um, I've actually got, so I've got two websites. I've got the marketing one, but my target audience is small businesses, but I also run an entrepreneur's community called The Exceptions. So we do weekly blog articles on like growing your business, general productivity, um, new videos, all those kinds of things. Like the videos you've seen of me, most of them, all of them are posted to the YouTube channel. So theexceptionsnetwork.com, you might like. um, And through there, if you join the Facebook group, like I'm always happy to help people out here and there. Like I do my, I'm flat out, but I do my best to just chime in, help people. I just wrote an ebook on how to build a personal brand. So that might be useful. I wrote one, one book on um, the ultimate startup blueprint, but it's more about startups. Uh, you can still use it to start a business, but yeah. it's more about like technology and stuff. Well, so thank you so much for all those resources, Mitch. And um, obviously with what he knows, if anyone wants to get a hold of Mitch, I will put down all his social media handles at the bottom. And, uh, or you can just get in touch with us. I will talk to his people and his people will, uh, be in touch with us uh, regarding how you yeah. can also get mentorship or learn from him. Or if that is um, what you really want to do, especially start your own digital marketing agency, we've got this free resource that you can download from uh, the links below as well. It's just a 20 step uh, strategy for, you know, step by step how you too can start your own digital marketing uh, agency. It's been a pleasure, Mitch. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, whoever's watching, the links will be below for you to get all the resources that you got uh, today. Do you have any last words for us there, Mitch? Uh, no. Hey, I'm happy to help. And if you do need something, shoot me an email or tweet at me or something and I'm happy to help. Honestly, it's all good. You're a kind man, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine.